Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Parashah Pointers. We delve into the weekly Parashah and look for inspiration, not only for ourselves, but especially how to raise our children. Um, this week's message is dedicated in honor of David Shemtov. Thank you so much for all your support and Hezuk. Also sponsored by Albert Dweck with the fervent prayer that his family continues to grow in the path of Torah. Thank you, Albert, for the beautiful uh, dedication. The Pasuk says in this week's parasha, anashim al hanashim, meaning the men and the women, they all came to go and make donations to this new mishkan, this new tabernacle. Kol nadiv lev, anyone whose heart moved them. And what they gave, they gave tremendous. The, the women especially uh, gave uh, brooches, earrings, rings, pendants. They gave all their jewelry to the building of the mishkan. Um, it's important to note that jewelry, a woman's jewelry, is very dear to them, but they gave it. They gave it with a, with a, with a charitable heart. The Sefer Orhot Sadikim, it's in a book that was written about 500 years ago, and it's just, we don't know who the author is, but it's an amazing book. He says over there that giving with zirizut, having alacrity when we do something, is probably the most important midah, it's the crown jewel of everything. What is alacrity exactly? It's a very, very hard English word, um, but it really means to act with speed or enthusiasm, right? So when you do that, that is a very, very, very important midah, because when you have that motivation, you're enthusiastic and you run to do something, then you're gonna, go, you're gonna be motivated to do everything. Motivation's a big deal. And zirizut is to be motivated and to be enthusiastic in what we do. That's what fuels achievement in life. This is the number, this attribute, if you have it, it'll turn ideas into accomplishment. What's an example of Zerizut? This week's parasha. The women, they contributed their jewelry to the building of the Mishkan, but they did it with generosity. They went and they did it with Zerizut. They did not wait, they did not waste any time. And we know the Malbim explains the Malbim is a rabbi. The name Malbim is Rabbi Meir Leibush Ben Yechiel Meir Weiser. Malbim is actually the first letters of his Hebrew name. He lived in the 1800s. He was a great rabbi. And he says that when they gave generously to give to the Mishkan, it was coming as a kapara, an atonement for the Jewish people. Why? Why? He says a beautiful thing. The women were not willing to give their jewelry to the golden calf. But yet at the flip side, when it came to do something good, when it came time to do something that was correct and get them closer to Hashem, they ran and they did it. They did it with enthusiasm. They said, take our jewelry, we're gonna do it. When it was charitable, when it was good, they did it. When it was sacrilegious, they didn't. They held back. And Hashem sees that. That zirizut, to do the right thing, wow, that gives a tremendous nahad ruach. The question that we have to talk about is, first of all, how do we get started? A lot of the times when, we, when we, just, we just can't get going, it's very hard to begin. There's something called inertia. It's like in the laws of physics, when something's not moving, it doesn't go. But when it starts, you can't stop it. For whatever reason, it's just, just, if you, it's just hard to get started. And we look at our children, we want to see them be motivated. So we have to first understand that the ability to decide what we want to do is one of the greatest gifts that we have. We could have desires. We could decide what we want to desire. It's a gift from Hashem. Zirizut comes from that deep desire. They, these women had a deep desire to come close to Hashem. So they then acted the right way, but it all starts with the desire. It doesn't start with the act. So how do we get our children to utilize this great gift of having the right desire to be motivated. Everyone's worried about their kids being motivated to do the right thing. Oh, he doesn't get up, doesn't want to go, doesn't want to do. How do I get him to want? How do I want get him to want to learn? How do I get him to want to, to pray? How do I do it? I don't know. That's the question we're going to answer today. Motivation. How do we do it? So the first thing we're going to talk about is the bigger picture. When there's a bigger picture... You could now have steps towards that bigger picture. Let me explain. You have a boy, let's say, right? He said, hey, what do you want to be? I want to be a Sadiq. I want to be a Chacham Ovad Yosef. Really? Okay. So he's motivated. He has a, he has a desire, right? 
then you tell him, you know, every time you learn how to read, you're going to become a Chacham Avad Yosef. Every time you go to Yeshiva, you're going to become like, you could become like that. Every time you do the right thing, every time you look at the right thing, you're going to become... Everything he does, all the smaller little goals now fit within a bigger picture. And that gives motivation to all these little things to happen. Because all these little goals now have much deeper meaning because they are getting him to a broader objective. That's one way that we create motivation. Now everything has a motivation. You wear CT, you wear Kippah, you do everything you do. You wake up the morning, you pray, and you want to become a Vajra. I want to be great into I want to be Tamin Chacham. Well, these are the steps you got to take to get there. And those little steps are not always so easy, but when you have that motivation for the bigger picture, then, and you explain it, then you're going to get that motivation. There's another very important lesson that we, we, we learned from the Misilai Yisharim. Fake it until you make it. It's an amazing thing. The Misilai Yisharim says that if a person acts in a way of enthusiasm with Zirizut, he will start to feel a real excitement to do the mitzvot, even if when he started to act that way, he didn't feel that way. And this is, a, this is proven by all the psychologists today. Your outer actions affects your inner feelings. So we could tell. Now here's the, here's the hidush. Don't just let them do it without telling your kids that. Tell your kids. It's okay if you don't feel that connection right now when you go to pray. It's okay when you don't feel that connection when you want to do a mitzvah sometimes. But if you act excited and you act with enthusiasm, then you're going to start to feel it. Now they want to act with enthusiasm. And they don't feel like they're crazy for not feeling it right away. It's very important to give that information over to our children. Finally, another factor in gaining motivation is having a deeper understanding of the mitzvot that we do. When we have a deeper appreciation for what we're doing, we get, we get excited. We were learning the Gemara Masechet Shabbat, six o'clock in the morning, I teach men. And we were learning about the fact that when you're wearing your tefillin, the, the Gemara Masechet Shabbat says you have to continuously touch it. Why? You should never forget that you're wearing your tefillin. Very nice. Where do we learn that from? Says the Gemara, we learn it from the Kohen Gadol. He used to wear a seats. A seat was like this, uh, this head plate made out of gold. It said, Kodesh la Hashem, holy to God, it has Hashem's name on it. And it says over there in the Pasuk twice that a, that a Kohen Gadol has to have it on his head. We know you have to have it on your head. The Pasuk is coming to tell us something beautiful. Not only you have to physically have it on your head, but you have to have it on your mind. So says the Gemara, if the seats, the, the head plate of the Kohen Gadol, only has one name of God. And yet the Kohen Gadol has to be constantly thinking about it. The Tefillin, which is so much greater because it has, how many more times does it have Hashem's great name? Is it not all the more so? Stop. We've been learning this. We said, holy cow. That means, in a certain respect, the Tefillin that we wear every day is more holy than the seats of the Kohen Gadol he wore in the Bet HaMikdash? Wow. What do you think the motivation looked like after that when they went to put on their tefillin? Or when I put on my tefillin, I was like, this is crazy. That creates motivation. I'm like the Kohen Gadol. I'm big stuff. I'm a holy man. I'm wearing this tefillin. These are some of the ways we could create motivation. Once you got motivation, they're there. They're going to want to do everything. Like we saw it said in the beginning from the Orchot Sadikim. Once the motivation's there, everything else will come. Be'ezat Hashem. We should see that our children are motivated. And they have that son to grow in Torah and Shammai. We should see only Nahat from our, all our children. Shabbat Shalom.